Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Okay, so to take care of static equilibrium, especially to make an airship, airship statically heavy or even to make it statically buoyant, we resort to what is called as ballasting. Okay, ballasting, basically ballasting is nothing but use of weights to adjust the static heaviness and this is uh, summarized as SH from now on. So, static heaviness will be called as SH from now on. So, there are three types of ballast which is normally available on airships. One ballast is called as the ballast which can be discarded. That is enable ballast. Okay. This is something that helps balance during propulsion failure. But you do not throw it when you have propulsion failure. If you throw it, it becomes light, then it won't come down. You have no propulsion system. So, this jettisonable ballast is there to ensure that you are heavier than air. But in case everything is fine and now you have come into land or you are coming into land. Let us say the flight is getting over and the pilot is coming into land. At that time, it is better to have static heaviness. Okay. So, common sense says during takeoff, I would like to be statically light. During landing, I want to be statically heavy. During cruise, it is best to be statically neutral. Right? So, now the airship is coming into land. If I do not reduce the weight, now how do I reduce the weight? Uh, if I do not increase the weight. Okay. So, how do you increase the weight? We will see. Let us see. We will we'll see. There are many, many methods. Usually, we use water because if something has to be thrown, it cannot be stones or it cannot be anything heavy which can hit people. So, therefore, the jettisonable ballast is always water. <coughs> then we have ballast which can be removed, which can be removed. This is adjustable. Okay. This is basically used to compensate for the people who will be in the airship, but when you park it, they are not there. For example, during flight, the airship will have a pilot, co-pilot. Generally, there is a there is a air traffic regulation that beyond a particular capacity, nine passengers to be precise, you need to have two pilots in the cockpit, a pilot and a co-pilot. So, any airship with more than nine seats will have pilot and co-pilot. They may also have a flight crew if it is a passenger airship, they may, there might be a flight attendant or a flight crew member. Plus, when you actually travel in an airship, you carry fuel, you carry payload, etc. But when you park the airship on the ground, you do not carry, you do not put, uh, you do not ask the pilots to stay there. Please do not get out because it will become neutrally, uh, in, you know, uh, less buoyant. So, please stay in this cockpit. You cannot do that. So, what you do is, as the pilot is going away, as the material on the airship is going away, you replace that with some weights. So, these weights, they compensate for change in the buoyancy because something has been removed. So, equal amount has to be put up. Now, what would be the design requirements for these weights? Just like I said, the reasonable ballast should be something that uh, does not hurt people when it is thrown. So, water is fairly heavy, but it may not hurt people as we throw them. So, for the removal ballast, what would be the design requirements? If you are designing a removal ballast system, what would you put? Yes, so Chetan. Wheels at the bottom. 
हाँ सो दैट इज बेसिकली मेड फॉर ग्राउंड मोशन ग्राउंड मूवमेंट सो आर यू सिंग यू विल अटैच द व्हील्स एंड मेक इट हैवी अग्री सो इन सम केसेस यू मे हैव बट देन यू नीड समवन टू रन बिहाइंड द एयरशिप व्हिच इज अ डायनेमिकली मूविंग सिस्टम एंड यू हैव टू रन बिहाइंड द एयरशिप एंड देयर विल बी देयर शुड बी अ हुक समवेयर एंड यू हैव टू गो एंड अटैच दिस हुक नॉट एन इजी टास्क so we don't we are, i have not seen people using wheels etc to be attached as the removable ballast this is something you will put inside the cockpit let us say inside the gondola yes chin yes i mean i would like to have uh, multiple units of a small unit of weight like sandbags or something so i can one thing is that is modular so you can quickly just throw them and if they are of 1 kg each let's say then we can very easily match the exact weight of that That's exactly the case. So usually sandbags are used. Usually we use sandbags, uh, heavy sand, which occupies less volume for the given weight. Because if I use a lightweight object, it will occupy more space. It will be difficult to remove. So we use sandbags. So depending on the airship size, when we when we fly our small remotely controlled airship, we have bags of hundred gram, fifty grams, two hundred grams, five hundred grams. okay so we just use directly we put bags when the airship is moored and then we balance it but in passenger carrying airship there could be 100 kg sandbag 200 kg sandbag 50 kg etc up to down to 1 kg half kg a few of them for the finer balance so this is another kind of ballast the third type of ballast is permanent ballast this is not something that is removed now why why would you like to have permanent ballast because when you build the airship the customer may want you to install a particular equipment so you install it and you can carefully design such that when this instrument is installed the cg is below the cb so you ad adjust the location out of some time the customer says i have now one more camera or my camera has changed or there is another equipment of 350 kg which has to be installed <coughs> and you cannot say hang it on the balloon it has to be carried these are heavy items you cannot just put them anywhere and from the point of view of operational use they may be needed to be at a particular place so with that your cg will go for a 6 okay so if you have for instance heavy items added on the back side you will have a airship with nose up Now you can't fly with that kind of an airship. Nose up flight is not possible. There will be very high angle of attack, and hence there will be a substantial increase in the drag coefficient. So what we do is we trim the airship to a desired angle by putting dead weight at particular places called as the payload or called a ballasting base. Now for the ballast is basically there to cancel the moments so the best place to put the ballast is the farthest away from center of gravity farthest away from the nose from the from the cg would be the nose or the tail so what we do is we always build some kind of a pocket or some kind of a container either at the extreme nose or behind now normally our experience has shown that cg normally moves back than desired so by and large experience shows that ballast is to be carried more in the nose side or in the front side but there could be a situation where the ballast is needed on the rear side so there should be provision for ballast both in the extreme front and extreme back so ballast which is provided to create or to move the cg to a location that is desirable and is not removed Has never touched unless there is an imbalance. That is called as a permanent ballast. The permanent ballast is also used in aircraft. All aircraft have permanent ballast. In fact, MiG-27, I remember, used to have around 90-95 kg of permanent ballast mounted in the nose because of modifications and changes uh, over the years. It is dead weight. But if you can use Suppose you are given a requirement to mount a new payload, 
and that matches with or is somewhat comparable to the weight of the ballast needed. And if you can put it at that location, great. Then you can say fine, my payload capacity is not compromised. The ballast also is the payload. But this is a ideal situation which may not happen. Okay. Now, <coughs> there, is a, there is a term called as way off which is very, very important as far as LTA systems is concerned. A way off basically means what you do to trim the vehicle to the condition at which you want to operate. So, just before each takeoff and remember this is each takeoff, what we have to do is we have to adjust the ballast for maintaining the required static uh, heaviness. So, first you make it neutrally buoyant by adjusting the removable ballast. Now, the airship is neutrally buoyant. After that, you add the disassemble ballast, usually water tanks are filled up to provide the required static heaviness. Okay. This, so, when you fly the airship, there is a permissible static heaviness or a recommended static heaviness which the manufacturer tells you. So, in some airships, it is 500 kilograms. So, an airship with 13, 14 passengers would have a static heaviness of maybe even more than 500 kilograms. So, that much weight you carry in the form of a jettisonable ballast. Now, during flight, what you do during flight is the pilots during flight, during level flight, because remember airship flights are normally for very, very long endurance. They, know, they do not normally have short flights. So, flights of 10 hours, 15 hours, 17 hours are routine or normal in airships. And uh, the consumption of fuel also is slow, not as rapid as that in a large uh, transport aircraft. So, you have to keep on looking at the rate of descent during the flight and you have to keep on see if I trim the aircraft that means if I balance out all the moments and if I start flying the aircraft or the airship does it start descending slowly. So, it, it one has to maintain that. Okay. Secondly, during daily maintenance this is a dynamically changing vehicle. No envelope material is perfectly <coughs> gas proof. Especially if you look at hydrogen, it is such a nasty, nasty gas, smallest molecule. So, there are stories of people saying that it has escaped from steel containers. Okay. You think steel is a very safe way to store things, the gas can go out from steel containers because the molecule is very small. So, what about this LTA fabric? So, LTA fabric can only contain the gas to some extent. In real life, now we will have a special lecture on airship envelope materials where we will discuss the properties of materials. Basically, the rough ballpark value of leakage of LTA gas from a good airship is around 1 liters per square meter per day. So, over so many days, there will be some gas loss and that will affect the lifting capacity. So, if you want to make it statically light, it would not happen because the gas has gone out. So, then you will have to go for top up. If you want to weigh off, weigh off means balancing. If you want to achieve neutral buoyancy for an airship which has been flying for let us say 6 months, you may have to top up the gas. You may have to push in more gas and then acquire the required weighing uh, features. So, these are different things compared to aircraft. In aircraft, you do not have these problems. In airships, you have these very strange situations. Uh, of course, we know that as the airship flies, there will be loss of weight due to fuel. Sir, sir as we are flying, we are flying for 15 hours before, the surface area is large, then we will face a severe loss of the gas. Yes, yeah. correct. So, now, due to many reasons, one because of flying for 15 hours non-stop, the other because we are flying and fuel is getting consumed. The weight of the system which was statically heavy will become statically neutral or even light. Okay. So, 15 hours ago you were okay, statically heavy, 
beyond 15 hours from the flight, now you are statically light. So what do you do? That is what we are going to look at now. We have to have some mechanism of recovery of the weight that we have lost because of the fuel. So this is a very imaginative area. And here you will see people have done very interesting things. So let us look at what people have done, what are the pluses and minuses of each. And then you can suggest some better methods of doing it. So because of the weight loss during flight, there will be a limit imposed on the statical heaviness and static lightness with which the airship will be allowed to operate. There should never be a situation that during flight you achieve a state situation of static lightness and you can't do anything about it after that. So therefore you can never come down. In case there is a power plant failure, you are stuck in air. So one has to avoid that situation. So basically we define certain maximum static heaviness for takeoff and certain maximum static landing, static lightness for landing. So we need to calculate during the whole flight how much statically light we will become. We can't allow below a particular number because then it will become unsafe for you to operate. So for now for improving the range and endurance because suppose you start becoming statically light below the permissible limit, the only option is please go and land and make yourself heavy by collecting something. So that means you are limiting your range just like we studied in twin engine aircraft operations over the sea. There are the limits on what route you can take because of the one engine inoperative criteria. So there are limits on operation. Similarly in every airship there will be a limit because of the permissible static heaviness, static lightness. If you are, what will happen tell me, what will happen if you are more statically heavy than permitted during takeoff. It will not take off. So how does it take off when it is statically heavy? Propulsion. So it is statically heavy, you start the engine, okay. maybe you start, you start giving it some kind of a thrust vectoring if it is available, so you leave the ground and then you start moving forward. As you move forward, there will be a component of the force acting. So that component will overcome the static heaviness. So you will be able to become neutrally buoyant and then you can fly. What will happen if your uh, airship is less or I should say more statically light compared to maximum permissible? You can't come down because the thrust produced by the tilting of the engine is not able to overcome the static lightness. So you are struggling to come down but you can't come down because the net vertical force is taking you up. Therefore there is a limit. So what we can do is, can we do something in flight? We have 15, 20, 30, 40 hours of flight. Can something be done to collect weight during the flight so that as the fuel is consumed and the airship becomes light, we kind of compensate that by collecting weight while going. Now obviously you cannot create mass in mid-air, that is against the basic principles of physics. So you have to do very interesting things. 